Programmer and you're looking for the perfect MacBook Pro for your programming needs? Listen, this is the review for you, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. You want to stay. This is the 2020 MacBook Pro 13. Don't go anywhere. Here it is. Let's talk about this bad boy. This is the 13 inch. Like I said, it is the one with four Thunderbolt ports. So it's double the others uh, that have two. This comes in currently at $17.99 US dollars. It features a two gigahertz quad core i5 10th gen uh, with hyper threading. It does boost above the two, point, the two gigahertz. It's like three something. Uh, it features 16 gigs of DDR4, it's special, it's LP DDR4X at 3733 megahertz. It has a 512 gig NVMe SD, as well as, you know, a true tone retina display. So, it's everything you need to get going. And the reason that we're looking at this one versus the uh, entry model MacBook Pro 13 or the other uh, one above it is because this is the one that my company is actually replacing all of our MacBook Pros to. Uh, this is a decision that I made for my company to go to this one and we're going to talk about why. So, I get asked all the time, Jeff, what, which MacBook Pro should I buy? Should I get a MacBook Air? Should I get a 15 inch? Should I get a 13 inch? Is there a Windows machine that I should get? And my answer is always, well, what are you doing? Uh, it really depends. You know, we talk a lot here on the channel about having the right tool for the job, getting the right tool that's in your toolbox. So this is, in my opinion, the right tool for an app developer, whether that's Xcode, uh, which is iOS or Android, uh, React Native, you know, web apps, whatever, have it. This is my, my choice for that. So let's talk about it. So Apple has um, gotten rid of the crappy uh, keyboard of yesteryear and replaced it with the new um, butterfly. So it goes from the, the skizzer switch or whatever to the butterfly switch. Maybe it's vice versa, I don't care. Anyway, the keyboard's better. The keyboard is fantastic. It is a joy to type on. The trackpad is also nice and big and in the middle. It is also a joy to use. You can use all of your uh, gestures, which is fantastic. Uh, works really well for that. The screen is, of course, the Retina 13-inch um, display with True Tone. I think it's got like a max brightness of 300, 350 nits, something like that. Um, and then, of course, the Retina resolution, whatever it is, it's 30-something by something. Who cares? That's like getting into the nitty-gritty of it. Okay, so... Uh, this thing is, seems smaller to me. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it isn't. I don't have another 13 inch here to compare it to, but it does feel smaller than the uh, other, than the 2019 or 2018 uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro. So for scale, we can look at the new uh, 2020 iPad Pro here uh, that we did a review on. So as you can see, I mean, it's just, the, it's a little bit wider than the, the iPad Pro. Um, they're close to the same thickness. It's not super thick. So, I mean, it does seem smaller to me. I don't know why that is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, they have moved the speakers up to the top. So the speakers are kind of like they used to be on the 15 and 16 inches to where they're, they face forward. So I think they sound better. It still has a 720p crappy webcam. Still has the crappy mic. Um, so that hasn't changed. It does have the 10th gen Intel. It does not have dedicated graphics. So let's talk about how it does an app development. And that, cause that's really why you're here. So when working with, with Xcode, for example, um, running an iPhone, 11 Pro Max, quadruple XS, whatever it is, uh, it does really well. And so <clears throat> it wasn't laggy at all. Everything was very snappy. And then, and you know, this is even while doing our screen recording of it. 
So it was very snappy. It wasn't unpleasant to work with. If you've seen my other reviews of some other Mac products, you do know that it can get a little bit laggy. Um, <clears throat> so it's not laggy at all. You're able to go in, test your app, run the VM. You can do some code, push it, stop it. You know, you can really do what it is that you need to do as a developer and continue to improve upon and, and make edits to your code. Uh, run the VM, uh, check it out. It makes it really seamless to do. It's like I said, it's not laggy at all. It works great when doing that. Um, this way, you know, you always got something going on. You're not having to wait for your system. And so in our industry of development, time is money. You know, um, if you freelance, you bill out by the hour. You don't bill out, some people bill out by the project, but a lot of times it's billed out by the hour. And so time is money. Uh, if you do bill out by the project, then the less amount of time that it takes you means that that's more money that you make per hour. So if you bill out a project, um, say you charge $1,000 for it and you figure that it's going to take you 15 or 10 hours, then that's $100 an hour. However, if you complete it in, say, eight hours, then you know that's about $125 an hour that you've effectively made. And so you made more money. So time is money. I uh, also did a little bit of Android Studio on here. I didn't capture the footage for it. However, uh, Android Studio did not want to work for me, so just forget about it, didn't do it, which is it's just how it is. Um, then I looked at Final Cut Pro. And so working in Final Cut Pro on this um, was actually not bad at all. It really wasn't. Um, <clears throat> Adding videos to the timeline, uh, doing the import from the SD card, it didn't take that long. It, it didn't take a whole lot of time to import it from the video card. Uh, adding color transition or adding color gradients, audio um, transitions and titles and things like that, it didn't really cause the background renders to take an excessively long amount of time. Um, the system did start to heat up. You do hear the fans start to spin up. So, you know, it, it, it does push it. However, I was quite surprised that it actually handled Final Cut Pro uh, that well, to be honest. It just goes to show just how, you know, um, good Final Cut, Final Cut Pro has been uh, developed for the use on Apple machines. Um, this isn't something you would technically think of as a content creation machine, you know, you think you need to have an i7 or an i9 and then you want to have you know a hardcore dedicated gpu 32 64 gigs of ram something like that uh, you know you really want to have a big system because time is money in that as well however if you just want to get into content creation uh, this does it quite well like i said working with different things inside of final cut pro it worked really well and so when looking at like an export or a share um, a 15 minute share at H.264 at 1080p, it took three minutes and 44 seconds um, to share it. So that's after, you know, adding the color gradients, the transitions, uh, audio, things of that nature, you know, changing colors, uh, adding titles, uh, which is through Apple Motion. Adding all of that stuff in and sharing a 15 minute video it took three minutes and 44 seconds. That's not bad. I mean, that's really good for 1080p. Now, if you're gonna try and do something like 4K, it's really gonna put a, a very big strain on this system. And so you're probably not gonna to wanna to do 4K with it. I mean, you could. I mean, if you're not making money from it and you're just learning it and this is what you have, then why go out and spend money whenever you have something that can do it? Um, as long as it's not hindering you from doing your other work, it's fine. You know, it's, it's fine to, to do that. Um, and so it does really well for that. It does really well for that. And so let's, let's wrap this up a little bit. We'll start and we'll go into this conclusion. Um, I, you may not know this, but I'm a director of IT, and so I'm in charge of the devices that we use uh, at the software company that I, that I work for. And currently we are using 2017 uh, MacBook Pros with the four Thunderbolt ports. 
And the reason I keep specifying is because there is a difference between the two and the four uh, as far as Thunderbolt ports go. And so we are noticing that our machines, even though they're 2017s, um, <clears throat> are getting, they're getting old in this space, trying to, to do what we do and do it effectively and efficiently. And so after you know trying out some MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, the 13 and the 16, this is the one that we landed on for our app development purposes. And the reason for that is because it does, it has that quad core eight thread i5. Uh, it does boost higher than the two gigahertz. It's got 16 gigs of really fast RAM. Okay, it's got a 512 gig NVMe SSD. And also it's got the 13 inch uh, retina display. And even though that's not what we're gonna code off of, you know, we do, we can, use dongles. So it's got the four Thunderbolt ports, which is great uh, in case you need to add dongles or you need to add, hook a device to it. Um, like if we're testing, you know, there's devices that we have to hook to our, our machines, etc. So it gives that extra expansion, uh, which is really required to do our job and do it well. And so after trying out all these machines, we landed on this, and like I said, because it is, in my mind, the sweet spot. It is the sweet spot for application development. Um, like I said, it's got the power, it's got the RAM, it's got the space, it's well built, it's not super heavy, so we can take it, you know, we have to go meet with clients, um, <clears throat> you know, we have to, we have meetings and things like that, so it does really, really well in all of those, and this is, in my opinion, the best MacBook Pro 13 since the 2020, and it may, e or, I mean, since the 2012 and it may even beat the 2012. I know the 2012 MacBook Pro 13 is like the holy grail of MacBook Pros. However, I do believe that this is the best MacBook Pro that Apple has put out since, and even including, the 2012 MacBook Pro 13 with Retina Display. Um, it's fantastic. It's great typing experience, great trackpad. It's got the performance, it's sleek, it's not super heavy, it's not large, it's got you know the expansion. And so if you're in the Mac ecosystem and you're looking for a development machine, this is the one to buy. This really is the one to buy if you're in the app development. And listen, I wanna thank every single one of you all for watching this, I hope this helps you. I get a lot of questions like, hey, you know, like I said earlier, which machine should I buy? If you're in it and you're one of a machine that's gonna last for several years and you've got the funds, this is the one to get. Like I said, it's $17.99. Um, it is the one to buy. You can do, uh, like I said, your application development on it. It's gonna be smooth, easy. You're gonna get a lot of work done. And you can even learn content creation if you want to. And you're just gonna have a great experience overall using it as your daily driver. And so like I said, I wanna thank every single one of y'all for watching. Stay safe. Don't forget, October 26th, 7 p.m., we are going to be streaming World of Warcraft Shadowlands um, here on the channel. I'm gonna be doing a stream that night and probably a couple days after it. Uh, during the first night of streaming, we're gonna give away a couple codes for Shadowlands. So I don't know how many yet, but we're gonna give away a couple of codes. And I hope to see you all there. And thanks for watching. If you haven't, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I want to hit a thousand subscribers before December and I can't do it if you don't subscribe. Keep it real.